It's an issue that's led to protests and shined a spotlight on deep-rooted inequities. It is an abomination to think that, you know, 10 miles from Englewood, people are living 20 years longer because they have access to the things they need. Amea Pawar is with the nonprofit Economic Security Project, which Mayor Brandon Johnson announced will be partnering with the city to explore the creation of a municipally owned grocery store. Really, it's filling the gaps for the market um, and making sure that people have access to all the goods and resources that they need to survive and thrive. In the past five years on the South Side, store closings have included a Whole Foods, two Targets, and three Walmarts. Pawar says the model of offering millions in city subsidies to large operators has failed. But while those businesses were beholden to bottom lines, a city-owned grocery could measure profit in a different way. The longer lifespan, better educational outcomes, lower rates of chronic disease, which over time will save taxpayers money. Pawar says city-owned groceries have been successful in smaller communities like Baldwin, Florida, but some are skeptical. The reason um, we are considered a food apartheid or in this a food apartheid is because of disinvestment, and the disinvestment has came locally from government. Aisha Butler is with the Resident Association of Greater Englewood, which has led food desert protests. She says rather than a city-owned grocery, the city should empower local entrepreneurs. Doing right by Englewood would put ownership in the hands of people who live in 60621 and 60636. Pawar says it could take months to come up with a blueprint for a city-owned grocery, which would be partially funded by federal, state, and private dollars. Watch breaking news on YouTube. Subscribe to ABC7 Chicago Eyewitness News.